Welcome to some folks you might recognize. Uh, Mr. Ryan Gosling, everybody. America Ferreira is here. Kate McKinnon is in the house. And we can't do Bobby without Alan. It's Michael Sarah. Don't do it, guys. Give it up. And Alan. Hi. I mean, we can just let them use all the time with the applause if you want. It's easier for all of us. Uh, congratulations, guys. This is just a, you know, every film is a miracle, and this one in particular is a true work of art. Congratulations. Um, Ryan, let's start with you. When you were sliding down a pink slide screaming, Ken is me, were you thinking this is the one that's gonna get me the SAG honor, the Oscar not the honor? This is the one? I thought I, I thought I may not never work again, but I might work less. <laughs> this is a way out of the business? Yeah. Um, Look, this is an amazing ensemble, and this is just a sample of the ensemble that Greta Gerwig assembled for this one. I'm curious, yeah. Was there ever a table read? Was there a time when you guys all gathered on set and kind of got on the same page? Because I think it's remarkable, you're all in the same movie somehow. It's a tough movie to be in the same movie for, if you get catch my drift. Um, there was, there yeah. was no table read, but the Barbies had dance rehearsal, and that was like one of the first breaking the ice things that a lot of the cast did. And then we did have one kind of Barbies and Kens, plus Gloria and Sasha, like rehearsal that we did in that space. But we didn't do a table read. Um, Greta did this. She started with the high, high Barbie, high, high Barbie, high Ken, high Barbie, that scene. Remember? Yeah. <laughs> That's true, yeah. Correct. It, th this happened, right? It happened, yeah. Okay. Um, and she would go, okay, let's just try it. We all got in a circle and it would be like, you know, hi Barbie, hi Barbie, hi Barbie. She'd be like, wait, stop. Faster. Like, okay, hi Barbie, hi Barbie, hi Barbie, hi Well, stop. That's, well, that's too fast. Like, okay. And she was like, hi Barbie, hi Barbie, hi Barbie. She's like, well now it's monotone. It should be like a little sing song. You were like, okay. It was a bit like like if, if the guy from Whiplash was really loving and wanted him <laughs> to be great. And it was sort of like she was tuning us all like instruments. And she heard all of the dialogue like music. And I think we all, I don't want to, did you have the same experience that it felt like she was sort of like uh, yeah. Tuning us? Yes. Did you feel tuned? <laughs> um, yeah, yes. Um, she also, I felt that, but no, 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 it was good. It was a good, no, it was a good analogy. Um, she did that a lot on set too. She would do this thing where like she would tell us to run the scenes and then she would just close her eyes and she would just listen. And, um, and then she'd be like, oh, no. And then she'd be like, that's it, that's the one. And she was just listening for like, is it, like I think to her it was all music, right? I mean, it was a lot of, and then there was music obviously in it, but it, I, I think Greta has such a love of musicals and old time musicals. And she's also, I think her first love in the arts was dancing. She was a dancer and dances in a lot of the stuff she does and the Barbies dance and we had dance rehearsal. And yeah, it wasn't sort of just, by the book, kind of sit down, say the words. She got us like, kind of using all of our tools and instruments and, and senses. I'm, I'm curious like how this script reads. Like for, for <laughs> Kate and Michael, like when this comes around, does, does Greta give you a warning? Like this, this is coming, it's gonna read a little interesting. It's very specific and odd, but trust me on this. Or is it just sort of, here's Barbie, dive in, tell me what you think. We will wait all I night. Think, and, 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 and I'm just I'm really trying to remember the text, the text that came with it. I think she said, this is crazy, or this is weird, or it's, she, yeah, I think she did preface it, and I was like, I'm sorry, I have a winter's rash right now. 
My face is burning. <laughs> <laughs> is anyone else having them? Um, it's so cold. I just thought you were glowing. No, I, <laughs> no, it's a winter. I, I have a, I have, I'm covered in a winter. Well, it looks rash. great on you. Thank you so much. Um, anyway, no, I, I read. I remember she, she prefaced it by saying this is specific, and I read it, and I was like, yes, this is specific. This is a singular voice. This is a complete vision. This is a complete package. This is like. It's so specific, it's such a voice, and I was like, this is gonna be a, a massive, everyone's gonna love this because it's such a, and she's gonna execute it in her singular voice, and it's just, it's so so exciting when someone is like unswayed by what they think ought to be happening. This was like, she knew exactly, it was such, it was so philosophical. She knew exactly what she wanted to say, her and Noah. And um, I was like, this is, this is in the bag. I was not worried about how specific it was. I was like, this is, this, the more specific this is, the broader appeal it's going to have. And uh, <laughs> I guess you're right. <laughs> Well, then you step on set and you're like, oh yeah, like this is talk about vision. Like this, she's going for broke. I mean, Michael, do you remember the first time you stepped on set and it must have struck you as like, okay, we're, we're in the Wizard of Oz here. We're in something pretty special. Yeah, it's crazy. It was crazy. I mean, and you know, it was really described like that in the script too. I remember like the script being very visual and kind of painting that world and you know, even she sort of, I think I remember in the script, she kind of described it as like, you know, a kind of diorama within a soundstage, you know, kind of acknowledging the soundstage even and like old, like, you know, Busby Berkeley musicals and you could really feel it. And it was like, okay, well, this will be interesting. And then you get there and it really, I mean, I've never kind of been so like in complete disbelief about the production value. I was like, how much, how much money, you know? And, <laughs> How much money is this costing? And then, you know, and then, yeah, it was just, it was, I, I just couldn't believe everything I was seeing. And then, and then, you know, Greta being so, like, calm and um, exuberant and inventive in the, in the eye of that, of, of a production that size was, like, completely staggering to me. I was like, okay, this is going to be good. She knows what she's doing. I remember my stepdad came to set, and he was looking around, and he was like, Ryan, this is real cement. <laughs> Do you realize this is real pink cement? And I was like, oh, cool. And he was like, no, Ryan, they had to lay rebar in here. Do, do you know that they'll never get this out of here? This is, this is incredible. And Greta was like, it is real cement. And it had to be real cement. And it was just like that. It was like even stuff you you were missing, but but every it was re, like it was real cement. That's all I'm gonna say. It was real cement. <laughs> you come away with nothing else tonight, guys. <laughs> Did your prep invade your Mojo Dojo Casa house? Like, what what was what were you like at home prepping for Ken? I can only imagine what friends and family thought when they heard Ryan in the bathroom practicing whatever you were practicing to find your Ken. Do you remember your... I don't think I want to share that right now. <laughs> You're painting it in a very unflattering way. No, no, no. I, I, I want to peek into the art, into the craft. But I mean, this is the kind of role that, I don't know, you must feel out on a whim. You, even with someone like Greta, like, did you feel, was there ever a point where you felt totally at ease and comfortable with what you were doing? Or did you always feel like you were on the knife's edge of too much going for broke or what? It felt like doing a, a high wire act without a net in tiny shorts and no shirt. <laughs> okay, I'm just letting that visual sink in for everybody. Can I just say one thing yeah. about what Ryan was doing? Because when we were like doing that, this one scene in particular, I'll never forget because I was fused to the leather couch by the end of it because of all the body makeup. Like I would sit up and there would be a tan ass print on the couch. <laughs> but like Ryan was doing that whole monologue about the patriarchy and you know hitting the flowers with the golf club and everything. And like every take, you would be like, that whole thing could be in the movie. That could be that. I'm watching the movie right now. This is amazing. That day we were all like, holy shit, 
it was fun, fun to watch. Can I just say something about Michael? <laughs> that I was doing all this stuff, all the razzle dazzle, uh, every, you know, like it was like, you know, um, like a, you know, carrot top, like, you know, like anything I could think, you know, pull out of my mink. And Michael was watching it all go down, and then it was time to get a f shot of Michael, of Alan, and what Alan was feeling about all this. And they put the camera on him, and there was a big TV with uh, horses. And Michael turns around, and he watches, for the whole take, he just watches the horses. And he, he Miles Davis that shit. He just like turned his back on the camera for an entire take, and I was like, that's incredible. That's so Alan. He was Alan. You were so Alan, bro. The horses were definitely, the horses really meant something about the whole thing to Alan. I would imagine wardrobe also meant a, a fair amount to each of your characterizations. Um, I don't even have a question here except to say, like, Ryan, when you looked at what you were going to be wearing, was this like 30 to 90% of the job? Like, this is, this is sending me on the right path. I know what this character is now. Well, it helps so much. And, and Jacqueline, our costume designer, was just such a joy to work with. And she had such a hard, I mean, what's the job that she did? Because everyone has to wear something different all the time in every scene. It's never the same. And in Barbie world, unless you're wearing it, you're not doing it. So, yes, it was, it was everything. And, you know, for me, it was sort of like an opportunity to get Barbie's attention. So it was sort of like, you know, if I like, wrote my name on my underwear, because she might say, cool underwear, and I could be like, <laughs> underwear. And then it would start a conversation with Barbie. Or there would be like, if I was gonna wear a watch, I'd wear three watches or two pairs of anything to have Barbie Notice me, you know, it was sort of like there's a Coco Chanel rule where you leave the house take one thing off My rule is before I leave the trailer put three things on <laughs> I also didn't catch until repeated viewings how much like Stallone of the 80s influenced the evolution of Ken as a as a kid of the 80s I appreciated that and I'm sure you did too Yes yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Stallone. Stallone all the time. Just an observation um America, for you, I mean, look, you have a, a different, very unique task in this, and that you are you're a grounded human being in our world, playing off of this kind of insanity around you. Um, did that, I mean, talk to me about that, that, the task at hand, when you're playing opposite Margot and, and this collection of actors who are kind of playing slightly heightened yeah. characters. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was definitely... Uh, um, a challenge I we started in Barbie land so we had no context for like real world Gloria real world Sasha and I remember talking to Greta like what happens to humans in Barbie land like are we still humans or do we talk like Barbies or are we in human clothes or are we in Barbie clothes and um, and it was sort of like uh, something in between where it was like you're you but it's like your best day ever like you're wearing the thing that you love the most and like and and and, and she still wanted um like she wanted the even though we didn't like talk that the humans didn't talk like barbies in barbie land we would join the cadence of barbie land and so we had a lot of conversations about like what you know what happens to a human in barbie land and um which was weird to kind of set the character there before we like went to the real world. Um, but yes, I, and plus like, I mean, I went to Barbie dance rehearsals and I was not invited to Barbie dance rehearsals and because my whole childhood dream is just being with 20 um, grown women and learning choreography. Like that's just my dream. And I was like, there's no way I'm gonna be in a Barbie movie and not be at Barbie dance rehearsals. So I used to go and I would memorize all the parts. So when Margot got called away, I got to do Barbie's moves, which I did. And she walked in on me doing it and it was really embarrassing. Really embarrassing. And she was like, no, 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 please keep going. It was mean. Um, but, uh, I just like, I was having so much fun. It was such an intoxicating environment to be in. And then, and then I'd have to remember like, oh, I have to be the, the person. I have to represent the human race. Like, you're welcome. I hope I did you proud. 
But yes, that was true. Thank you. I was a patient. But um, I, yeah, that was the thing of like, and I think the deeper thing for me in trying to find this character was like, who is this woman who can somehow suspend her disbelief and believe that Barbie came to the real world for her and she's going to Barbie land and, and that she is still connected to this child's play and that she gives herself over to it fully and yet she's a woman who at the same time can hold the reality and the frustration and the grief and the disappointment of, of real life. And she kind of had to do and be both of those things and it was, it, like figuring that out, like how do those two things exist in this one character? And I think the more and more I played her, the more I realized like, oh, because we contain all these multitudes, because we can be serious women and moms and badasses and at the same time want to just like play and cut loose. And we, we should be able to get to be all of those things that we want to be. And so it was, like complicated and then shouldn't have been so complicated to figure it out, you know? We will get to the monologue in a second. You're not getting off the stage without talking about that a little bit, don't worry. But before we do that, um, Kate, the physicality of Weird Barbie, was that in the script? Is that something that you suggest somersaults would be good here? I, um, I don't like choreography. I don't like planned movement. I don't like movement at all. Um, and so that was very much in the script. It was like, weird Barbie, she's in the splits. That was like the sentence. And so Greta uh, had planned all of these um, things where like I could put my one leg in and then there would be a fake leg going like this and tumble passes and all this stuff and I was like okay if you want a choreographed movement and it was like thank god it, 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 it was so funny to look at <laughs> on the screen when it was all assembled and she just had it, it, what an incredible vision to have I was like wow this is what a director does like even just like well with like with like with my outfit and stuff like I was like I wanted to wear like a dirty baby doll dress because I thought that like weird Barbie would be in a dirty baby doll dress and she was like no it can't be dirty nothing can be degraded in this universe everything is even if it's weird it's like space trash it's like perfectly preserved and i was like wow you have thought about every square millimeter of this entire universe you've created and that's what a director does amazing amazing singular vision um michael any yes all is here um Michael, Alan's fighting technique a little bit different than Scott Pilgrim's, fair to say. Well, I, yeah, I wasn't even supposed to fight in the movie, you know? Um, am I allowed to say what it was supposed to be? Oh. Yeah. Am yeah. I, yeah. It was supposed to be Ben Affleck. Like, um, right? Am I allowed to say that? It just happened. We're, here we are. Um, <laughs> and I think, I think Ben wanted to do it, but he, you know, he was like directing his movie. Um, so, but they didn't find that out until like the like eleventh hour. They're like, okay, Ben's out. Something has to happen here. So you're gonna fight them. And so I had to jump in with the stunt team. I had just gotten over COVID, and um, they had me training, and I almost, I almost, I almost died. Like just, just in, doing the warm up. I had to lie down in my trailer, and they sent the nurse to see me, and I was sent home. So then we had a second rehearsal, and I learned it. Um, that's the story, basically. But, yeah. <laughs> no, but that was never part of, the, of Alan's uh, journey. I am. And then in the rehearsal, we did the thing where I murdered the guy with the shovel. And it was like a joke. And then we were like, Greta's not going to let me um, murder someone in the movie. And it's in the movie. <laughs> My five-year-old son was like, he's sleeping, right? I'm like, yeah, yeah, he put him to sleep. I think he's dead. <laughs> I think he is. Alan is a stone-cold murderer. <laughs> wow, I have never been so happy to bring up a topic in my life. 
Yeah. Um, I'm just Ken. Yeah, you ready to go there? Um, talk to me a little bit about the night before you're doing that. Are you like, this is going to be the, tomorrow's going to be the best day of my life or I'm scared out of my mind? Like, that must have been a, a day you circle, a couple days you circle on the calendar of the shoot. Yeah, we only had, um, I just, my, my kids helped me so much with that. They were, they were, they learned the choreography too. They were singing it all the time around the house. Um, and I was nervous about it because we only had one day to shoot it. They only gave, it was credit, you know, because it just kind of came up in a way in, in the moment. And it was like, we need to have a, a, a ballet, a dream ballet. <laughs> and, um, so they found a day to do it, and uh, anyway, my, my kids, it was the only time, day, time my kids have ever come to set, but they came and they were behind the monitor there and they were like, <laughs> just, they were the true source of my energy. As I said, I have to bring up the, the monologue, America, what a scene. Um, and it, <laughs> when you read that in the script, did you have, did you know this was, had the potential to be what it, what it became? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's definitely, it was a record scratch. Uh, even just um, reading the, the script, like, the monologue is a page, it's a whole page. So I remember getting to that and being like, what is happening? Like there's a whole page, it's just a block of dialogue. Um, and it's not what was expected. Like it's not the, the next thing you think is gonna happen in Barbie land, you know, is that the human woman is gonna get to kind of drop some truth bombs and, um, it, it, the whole script felt so unexpected. I mean, from the word go, you know, it's, it, it, the script was such a delight to read. If you like have the opportunity to read the script, it's so fun to read because Greta and Noah kind of talk to you as the reader directly. Remember in like the car chase scenes, they're like, just rip it from Fast and Furious 5. And they're like, you know, it's like that. We'll just take it from them. And like, it's just such a fun script to read and every moment was so unexpected. And so when I got there, it, I think it was just jarring of like, and then this thing is dropped and it was hard to really understand like how it fit in with the rest of the tone of the film but it did and it worked and it and I had I was I had tears and I was laughing and I knew that it um I knew that it was a moment and that it had to work for for the what happens next to feel good and and make sense and so yeah it, I I was stressed about it for sure yeah <laughs> stressed for a few months about it and then it was like one of the last things we shot right. so you know just kind of um let it create a lot of anxiety in my body for a few months so that's fun on the flip side probably one of the most the greatest senses of relief an actor can ever experience because the way this has resonated is just um, beyond yeah it's amazing i mean it's what a gift like i i felt it's the it's like the two sides of the same coin of like oh my god God, what an incredible gift. And then two seconds later, like, what if I get up? You know, like you don't want to mess it up. Um, and yeah, it. and I loved doing it. It was so fun to do. These poor people had to sit there and listen to me do that monologue like for yeah, two days. Yeah, it sucks to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> it was only amazing. Made, only made movie history. That's it was our... different every time and it was so amazing. Beautiful. And every actor will be doing that in acting class from time and eternity. 100%. I want to do it. Everyone will be studying your performance. Don't. We're ready. Do no. it. Do it. <laughs> but it makes you want to act. It's so good. It just inspires you to. Thanks. I'd love to hear from you guys uh, a little bit about your perspective on, on what this, what it's been like to experiencing, experience this film since it's come out. Because it has. It's made a lot of money, great, that and that is fun and exciting, but beyond that, it is, you know, like, Transformers movies make money. They don't talk about the patriarchy and change how people think. <laughs> That's what this movie is doing. 
and you, you guys know as well as I do how rare that is. Um, how, just give me a little bit of a perspective of what it's been like to see what this movie has become since, since it's come out. I'll answer at once. Three, two, one. <laughs> Um, it's just, I'm happy because, you know, as I said, it, it's like, uh, it's so weird, you know? And it's so, it's so elevated and it's so philosophical and it's so, it's such a classic hero's journey and it's about uh, the patriarchy and it's also just about it, it's like, it's so Joseph Campbell, it's like a, this character that leaves the a broken world and like goes on a journey and then comes back and realizes um, and fixes it and it's like so classic and yet so specific and so new and so like uh, fresh and I, I think it makes total sense to me why it has resonated in the way it has and um, I think it speaks well of our uh, culture. I think the, the moment, yes, my rash, I, it's my rash. Isn't it? <laughs> I think the moment I, I think about a lot when I, and I like appreciate you saying that, like a lot of movies make a lot of money, right? That's not like the thing that happened this summer. It wasn't like, wow, a movie made a lot of money. You know, it's like, no, a movie, like <laughs> something happened. And one of the things that happened was like, people got to experience something together, which is like what I remember loving about movies my whole life as a kid was that it was something that, it was like, ah, oh, Mighty Ducks 2 is coming out on Saturday! And it was like, everyone knew it was coming out and it's like, when are you going? And you know, and we've lost that. And especially post pandemic. And so, you know, Barbie brought us back to the movie for like a party, for like a celebration and people were dressed and like, it did that and that was amazing. But I think for me, the one thing, moment of, of true awe and, and trying to wrap my mind around what Greta accomplished, Greta and Margot and Noah and like this entire team, is um, I met the, um, the ambassador to the UN from Saudi Arabia, who also happens to be the princess of Saudi Arabia. And she came to me at an event and she said, I just want you to know, in Saudi Arabia, we got our first movie theater in 2018. And when Barbie came out, we had people crossing the border from multiple countries around us where Barbie had been banned. And for four weeks, you couldn't get a ticket to Barbie in our one theater. That people were literally crossing the border to see Barbie. And like, right? I mean, that's like, and at the same time, so you have one theater in the Middle East that like you can't get a seat for four weeks and people are literally crossing borders too. Then you have another conversation happening on the same planet where it's like, well, this isn't feminist enough, you know? And like, and I'm not judging that conversation. What I'm saying is like, when you make a piece of art that is creating conversations and showing us to ourselves, like who are we as a culture? Like, I think like, what else can you ask for from art, right? Like what more do you need to, to do? And it's like, that it is so much more than a movie that just made a billion and a half dollars, which it did. <laughs> it's a movie that moved people to think and to have conversations that they weren't having before. It's, uh, it is a movie that marks these times, but truly I, I can't imagine how this is not gonna be a perennial. This is a, this is a true classic and you guys should feel very proud of um, executing Greta's singular vision along with Noah's uh, co-writing of the screenplay. Congratulations on the film. This is usually where I say to the audience, spread the good word. Everybody knows about Barbie, but continue to spread the good word of Barbie. Uh, I give it up for this amazing panel of actors. So, yes. You can guys could just hang in your seats for one second. We're gonna make our swift exit. Thank you guys.